Welcome to one more edition of Politics Done Right. Today, we are honored to have Norman Solomon. He's a co-founder and national coordinator of RootsAction.org. His book include War Made Easy, How Presidents and Pundits Keep Spinning Us to Death, printed in 2006, and Made Love, Got War, Make Love, But Got War, Close Encounters with America's Warfare State. Senor Solomon, welcome to Politics Done Right once again. How are you doing today? Oh, just very well, and I'm so glad to be with you again. Well, look, uh, you always have something to say and you always have something to nourish people's minds uh, with. So thank you so kind for being out here with us. Let's talk Ukraine. I want to get right into it because this is an issue that I don't quite understand as I should. What the hell is the problem? What are we doing over there right after leaving Afghanistan? Well, of course, it's complicated in Ukraine and I don't want to claim to be an expert on the country, but I do have, I think, a good grasp of what's happening politically in the United States vis-a-vis -vis the conflict with Russia and that whole NATO situation. I'm reminded of a book that the novelist Norman Mailer wrote, and the title was, Why Are We in Vietnam? And the word Vietnam did not appear until the last page of the book. And I think this was a way of saying that the internal dynamics and the domestic needs of certain powerful forces really guide foreign policy. And it was true in the 1960s, and I think it's true in 2022. There is, after all, a history where the United States, as we remember, for 20 years in Afghanistan, and you cannot sell enough weapons to the Pentagon if you're withdrawing from countries. And so this is not a conspiracy theory, it's just to say that tremendous amounts of profits are being made from these arms sales to the Pentagon. And let's face it, huge amounts of weapons are now being shipped by the United States into Ukraine and the surrounding region. I am so happy that you brought up the defense industrial complex and the need to feed the animal because I've been speaking about that for some time, but having you uh, corroborate that stuff, it, it, it is, it is, it makes a hell of a lot of sense. Now, there is something that I want to back up to, something that was in your article that I actually learned, and that was, I didn't realize there's a tacit agreement between the United States and Russia that uh, NATO would not have expanded. And now that NATO has expanded and uh, Russia may be a bit concerned about Ukraine going into NATO, it seems to me like a lot of the American people don't understand that there is another level of indirection to this entire Ukraine issue. Why don't you tell us a little bit about, about that? Yes, yeah, something that we know from our own lives, if we've been fairly alert by the time we're you know, adults, walk a mile in my shoes is very helpful. If we don't think about how somebody else might see the world, we're gonna get into all sorts of conflicts. It's not just me, 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 but in foreign policy, often when you're the biggest power on the planet, there's this tremendous temptation often fulfilled, United States of America, it's all about us. Well, anybody who's been overseas in other countries and talked to people likely noticed that not everybody wants to just defer to Uncle Sam. So in this situation, if we imagine that a Russian-led military alliance invited Canada or Mexico as allies and started shipping weapons uh, through Mexico City to the border areas uh, of Mexico next to Texas, what do you think the response from Washington would be? I mean, the question answers itself. Absolutely intolerable. We had a Cuban Missile Crisis with uh, real dangerous stupidity on both sides in 1962 when there were missiles put in Cuba. So when we turned around, walk a mile in my shoes, look out the window at the Kremlin and you see the United States after promising, and this is documented, now the National Security Archive has published these documents. Then Secretary of State James Baker said uh, in 1990, when the Berlin Wall was falling, promised then Soviet Union becoming Russia, not one inch eastward will NATO expand. That promise has been broken time and again, a dozen times moving up to the Russian border. And so now Ukraine, which is a hugely important country for Russia on the border, not really that important to the US, now it's just for Russian policymakers, the idea that 
Ukraine would become part of NATO is just intolerable. And yet, you know, we look at the news media in this country, that is barely mentioned. You know, it, it is sad because uh, many, many, uh, you are speaking about this today. And when this go out, there are some people that are going to make, make the, give the impression that what you are is pro-Russian or that what you are is anti-American because you're simply telling some geopolitical truths. Now, I think if more Americans understood that, look, we don't have as a country, we don't have the best records in keeping, uh, the, 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 keeping to the treaties that we sign. Ask the natives, ask uh, the folks who thought they were going to get 40 acres and the mule, ask all these people whether or not we honor uh, agreements, whether written or verbalized. We generally don't. And this is another instance. And I, I mean, this is an instance that could cause severe, a severe problem to the American people. Why don't you kind of expand on that? Absolutely. I, I think you encapsulated and telescope this just profound truth. The history of the United States, and I'm not just talking centuries ago, I'm talking recent years, the US not only cast the first stone, but the second and the third, because we're the biggest on the block. We have the most powerful military on and on. During the Vietnam War, one of the two senators to vote against the awful Gulf of Tonkin resolution, Senator Wayne Moore said, might does not make right. It's just as wrong when we do it as when Russia does it. And when you set that climate, where, okay, we can invade one country after another, it becomes very clear to other countries, you can't trust Uncle Sam. I was blown away. I heard Michael McFall, the former Obama ambassador uh, to the uh, Kremlin, to Moscow, on the BBC the other day, and he's saying it elsewhere. We can't have an international order when one country can just go around invading another. Well, sure, I agree with that. But how can the United States, after invading Afghanistan, invading Iraq, and continuing wars there for decades, we're going around and we're preaching to other people? We're, we're telling Russia, on your own border, just shut up because it doesn't concern you that we're shipping weapons into this country that's right next to you? Um, you were actually being pretty kind. I mean, you didn't mention Panama. You didn't mention yes. Granada. You didn't mention all the, all the South American incursions. I mean, the truth of the matter is, uh, we don't. One one likes one would respect leading by example, and we don't quite do that. And it's not anti-American or unpaid. In fact, I think it is anti-American not to let the American populace understand what's being done in their on their behalf or in their names. Because one many times we ask, why don't they like us? It's not that they don't like us, they love us. They don't just don't like what our government go, go out there and does. Your you know, point. Roberto, you're reminding me of a bumper sticker that I saw when the US invaded Iraq and it had a picture of the American flag. And it said, these colors don't run the world. And that's a real hard one for some mm -hmm. Americans to swallow that we don't just get to tell other countries and work our will uh, diplomatically and, if necessary, militarily. The first anti-war demonstration I ever went to was April 15th, 1967, in New York City. And that was a week and a half after Martin Luther King Jr. gave his now famous speech at Riverside Church. And he said, quite candidly, in his words, that the United States was the biggest purveyor of violence on the planet. Yes. And here we are well into the third decade of the 21st century, and you look at Afghanistan, you look at Iraq, you look at our history, that is unfortunately still the case. It is, it, it is sad. And again, I, I think the, the most patriotic thing people like you are doing is out there telling the truth, telling it like it is out of your article. And folks, the name of the article is in the Salon magazine or Salon, uh, Salon website. It's U.S. hypocrisy on Ukraine paralyzes media, Congress, and even progressive Democrats. And in that article, he lays out, Norman Solomon lays out perfectly how we, the people, the fourth estate has given our government a pass. Uh, Democrats, uh, which are the, in government, has given reality a pass. Look, that was an excellent article that I think everybody needs to read, everybody needs to understand. It is not an, a pro-Russian article, it's just a fact-based 
article that all need to read and would make us a hell of a lot more educated. Um, I always ask my uh, the folks that I question, what would you have liked me to ask you uh, that I didn't? And, and please make it as expansive as possible, because like I said, you're the one who knows quite a bit more about Ukraine and what's going on there than I do that my audience would definitely appreciate. Well, I think as walking on two legs, the understanding and analysis is, they're crucial. And also it's the action is crucial. And I'm so proud to work with a team at rootsaction.org because we started with no one on our email list. We now have 1.2 million in the United States and everybody watching and listening is invited. If you're not getting our action alerts, you can join with other people. It's domestic issues, healthcare, housing, the environment. It's overseas foreign policy issues like we're talking about. Please join us at rootsaction.org. I think an underlying question is, one of the key ones is, how does this connect to the suffering that goes on in the United States? And the way in which 55 plus percent of the discretionary budget of the federal government goes to the military. And this is just uh, really violence, even, and he was no radical. Dwight Eisenhower said, every bomber, every plane, every tank, is in a real sense a theft from the children of the world. And that includes in our country. We have healthcare rates. We have suffering and deaths among children that are worse than in some of the most impoverished third world countries. We have to change this. It's really about priorities. Rootsaction.org, folks. Please sign up at Roots action.org. Norman Solomon, co-founder and national coordinator of rootsaction.org. Thank you so kindly, first of all, for all the work that you do. Secondly, for keeping us up to date with articles like you've, like, like you've had at Salon, and just for being here to expose our audience with the truth, with information to nourish your minds. Thank you so kindly for having been on Politics Done Right, Norman Solomon. Well, thank you, and thanks for Politics Done Right, all you're doing, and to everybody listening and watching, please support this program. Thank you so kindly. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.